putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. On the heels of the the attempt by the left to switch the conversation from Weinstein to George H.W. Bush. Dude's like 92 years old. They're saying, oh, he rubbed a woman's butt when they were doing a photo op somewhere in front of Barbara. You know, the dude's probably got dementia. You didn't even know what he's rubbing. He, he rubbed my butt and he told a dirty joke. Yeah, yeah, so does every 80-year-old invalid. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to, to tell you that men at any age can do whatever they want to women, but let's face it, that's just, that's nonsense. But what I do want to tell you is that there are so many Hollywood hypocrites and they have big names attached to them now. I mean, they've become superstars. People like George Clooney and Matt Damon. And they sat down for an interview on Good Morning America with Michael Strahan. And Michael Strahan asked the tough questions, right? (laughs) And I want to just let you hear their answers to Strahan. It's about a minute. Check check, check this out because we'll talk about it. He didn't do it out in the open. If there was ever an event or something that I was at in public with Harvey and he was doing this kind of thing um, and I missed it and there's some woman who was somehow assaulted and... And, you know, it was at the Golden Globes or something like that. And I somehow missed it. Then I'm sorry. Well, there you have it. Damon's sorry. Welcome to the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Talking about Matt Damon and George Clooney. And Damon's like, well, you know, listen, uh, if Harvey were openly molesting women in front of me and stuff, you know, like at the Golden Globes or something, then I would have been like, hey, Harvey, what are you doing? Touching that breast of that girl or, you know, watering the plant and holding her back there, making her look at you or something. Yeah, Matt Damon. Yeah, because all sexual predators do things in front of other people. Sure, that's how it works. All harass sexual harassers open openly harass. I mean, come on, we all know this. What a cop out, right? What did he expect Weinstein to do? Throw some young ingenue down and start humping her on the red carpet? Oh, there's Harvey. Jeez, hold on a minute. Uh, I'll do this interview in a second. Let me go get Harvey off this, you know, this young actress. Give me just a minute. No cameras, please. How, how stupid do they think we are? And Damon says it with such sincere. I mean, geez, if he'd been doing that, I mean, like, look in front of people. I, don't, I mean, like what? At the Golden Globes or something? Then sure. But hey, if he happens to be doing it during an interview or a casting call, well, how am I to know? I can't apologize for that, but I will apologize if he's done it publicly and I've been around and I didn't happen to see it. Doggone it. I'm security at those events. How did I miss it? Am am I making it enough silly enough for you to get it? Damon contradicts himself, too, because he admits to learning about Gwyneth Paltrow being uh, molested or targeted, harassed by Weinstein. In an interview that aired a a while back. He said that they knew Weinstein was a bully and a womanizer who bragged of betting actresses, but had no idea of the level of criminal behavior that was occurring behind closed doors in hotels. You would think that if he was going to be molesting actresses and, you know, declaring his sexual prowess, he would do it publicly. You see the restaurant table moving up and down. You go and the the maitre d' you look over and you go, what's what's up with that table? Harvey Weinstein. Oh, okay. I get it. Hmm. They said, uh, they, they knew he was, it's sexually harassed. The, they call, uh, Paltrow the, the first lady of Miramax before she shot this film called Emma. But Clooney, he's no better. Check out what he has to say. How do we change? There has to be a comeuppance for all of this, all of the people who are part of that chain. And then we have to make it safe for people to feel that they can talk about this. And in doing that, I think that'll scare away that kind of behavior. But more than anything, you're going to have to have a warning shot over the bow of those, anyone who would act like that, that you will be outed and you'll be out of the business. And more than that, you might be prosecuted. I talked with my wife about this and she said, you know, she could find... You know, in her line of work, which is human rights law, you know, there have been plenty of instances where some guy has tried, you know, to make their move in a it, some guy in power um, has tried to make their move. Many, if not most women have at some point in their life faced this kind of behavior. 
I think that's a little bit of a surprise to some of us that it's this big, that it's this this prevalent. And maybe that's something else that's good that comes out of this is that we're that we're going to have these discussions. We're going to have this conversation. And again, we're going to make it harder for it to happen. I'll get back to the big picture aspect of it in a second. But here's what you have to know. He says these people are going to be outed. If they do this, they'll get outed. And I'm going to ask this until somebody out somebody who's been outed. Weinstein's not the only guy who's been outed. So that's a lie. They're not outing anybody. And there's a reason they don't want to out each other. There's a reason. And the reason is they like it this way. The left will tell you, oh, we, we, this is awful. This is terrible. <laughs> As I tell you, here's the lesson again. They tell you opposite of what they believe. This is awful. They, no, this is acceptable. This is what we want. This is the way we get to see who really is in it. My, when I was first in sales, I had a, oh, a lady who just hated me. And I remember coming back to my boss, who I didn't know was a leftist at the time. She's a hardcore leftist. And I said to her, this lady is ridiculous. I mean, she's just unapproachable, you know, and I had to sell her parts and she just made my life miserable. And my boss says to me, well, hey, maybe you may have to make the, the ultimate sacrifice and looked at me smiling, my female boss. And I went the ultimate. And, and then I caught on what she was. I was like, not even with your husbands. You know what? No, it ain't going to happen. But that's the way they think. You can't get ahead on merit. By the way, meritocracy, you know, if you can do things, work hard and get ahead, that's that's racist. That's a, for another show. I think we talked about it. But here was the other second part of the of what Cooney said that Clooney said that was interesting. He says, my wife, uh, you know, in, in her line of work, uh, she's a, a human rights activist. And, uh, you know, it's happened with her, you know, people in authority. Now, think about what he just said. He just outed a whole other area of leftism. This human rights activist. I'm not saying they're all because there are many, many conservatives who care about, you know, sex trafficking and things like this. But he's talking about his wife, who is a dyed in the wool leftist, working with the most leftist organizations on the planet in order to save women from you know, sexual abuse and what have you. And he's saying the human rights activists, the leftists, they've hit on my wife. They believe they're in a position of power and they've tried to use that power against her. Let me ask you this. Think about what what these people are saving. OK, they go to these countries. They take these girls out of terrible conditions where they've been sex slaves for for multiple, you know, for warlords and ISIS and people like this. And they bring them to safety. OK, <laughs> You know where I'm headed. And I know my, my producers are going, yep, you guys know where I'm headed. They bring them to safety. And they say, oh, well, you know, Bill here, he he's a human rights activist. He'll help you. So Bill takes in a couple, three of these girls that he's going to help. And Bill clothes them and feeds them and whatever else. And the next thing you know, Bill's got a house full of kids <laughs> that look like they're from you know, the, the countries in Africa and countries in the Middle East, little mulattoes, <laughs> little swirls, as we call them in the black community, they don't help people. They look for ways to indulge their own indulgences. <laughs> Can I repeat it? To indulge themselves. That's what the guy, the guy is looking for easy prey. So he finds these girls that have been in horrible circumstances. Take somebody out of horrible circumstances, put them in bad circumstances, and they think, I'm in heaven. I mean, you get what I'm saying? The left doesn't help you. They help themselves to you. That's what they do. And Clooney is telling you, in his wife's business, this is one of the things that goes on. But then he goes on, he gives us all the pat answers, and at the very end he says, this is something we can all learn from. Sure. Sure. We've learned, Clooney, we've learned that Hollywood is Holly weird for a reason and that the Holly weirdos know who the bad guys are and they say nothing. Just like his wife won't tell on the human rights attorneys who are taking advantage of people. 
We also know that women are just as bad as as uh, men. They act as pimps for the male pigs who infest Hollywood. Hollywood is the worst kind of good old boys club and the left allows it to happen. They want it to happen. People don't want to talk about the stats in Hollywood. The fact that 23% of the Directors Guild are, are women, 11% are people of color, but they'll come chastise regular business for that stuff. He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.